I've spent the last few weeks racing here, there and everywhere, trying out cars and bikes and trying to find new locations to shoot videos at just to make them a bit more interesting apart from anything. So today I thought we'd slow down. So grab yourself a coffee, make yourself comfortable and let's talk about politics today. Morning, that's better. Now, I've tried to start this video several times now. It's really early and my brain's not working, so I am going to use some notes today. So please excuse me while I keep looking down, that's what I'm doing, I'm just trying to uh, work out where I'm going next, because my brain's not working yet and I haven't had enough caffeine. But um, what I wanna do is uh, talk about something that I don't really talk about on this channel very often, or if at all. And politics, because it's so personal, it depends where you live, what your interests are, uh, what your job is. If I start talking about politi politics generally, we've all got a different opinion based on those external factors. And uh, it will probably end up in a row in the comments section where nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's just a very personal thing. But every so often, something happens in the world of politics where I think it brings us all together. And I'm guessing if you watch this channel, you've either, you own an EV, you've got an interest in owning an EV, or perhaps just the, where this country's going as far as travel infrastructure and what to expect in the future. And that's what I wanna talk about today. Something that the uh, government appear in this country to be really interested in and really trying to uh, make a difference with. But let's look at some of the announcements and some of the reports and see where we're going at this still quite early stage. So the National Infrastructure Commission, they're an independent body that the government have employed to write a report on actually quite a lot of things. It's everything from uh, fiber optic broadband to how we're gonna recycle plastic in the future to our utilities. Uh, but there's a specific area of the report that looks at electric vehicles and the infrastructure that will support them going forward and then onto autonomous vehicles. As I say, it's an independent report that the government have no obligation to follow, but uh, it gives them a guide about what's happening and where this independent body see the future being. Now they have said, and this is for me as the headline, that uh, the government should support local councils in completing, in managing, in making a charging infrastructure for everybody to use. They go on to say that by 2050, they believe that 100% of vehicles sold will be electric vehicles and that the government should promote them as being good for the environment. And in order to do that, and in order to encourage the take up of these vehicles, what they should do is uh, roll out a charging infrastructure that gives people the confidence that they're never gonna be stranded. There's never gonna be an issue they will always have somewhere to go. In order to build that confidence, they've said there should be a, a network of rapid chargers across the country. Uh, in order to uh, ensure that that happens, the government should subsidize it. Uh, and they said that private investors should also be encouraged to take part. That's something we'll come on to again in a minute. But they've uh, said that the locations that are least commercially viable should be where the government start to build them first. Because obviously if you want private investors to come, they're not gonna put their money into uh, a non-commercially viable area. So let's get the government to do that first and then hopefully those private investors will come and invest in the places where actually they can make money because that, that's what it's all about for them. Uh, they've also said that in order to give these charges room and additional charges to support um, maybe lower level charging, i.e. seven kilowatt or um, quick charging, normal charging, not rapid charging, whatever you want to call it, um, that by 2020, 5% uh, of all parking spaces in local government car parks in our towns and cities should be freed up and have charges put in them. And then by 2025, that number should increase to 25%. So that would support charging in our local towns and cities, uh, off the road, in car parks, uh, where we can just go and plug in, go and do our shopping, and not have to think about rapid charges coming back in 30 or 40 minutes to move it on. So um, in my view, that's, uh, that's quite a sensible balance, rapid chargers and slower chargers for everybody to use, depending on where they're going and what they're doing that day. They um, 
talk about the load on the national grid, something that's been a, a really big topic recently. Uh, talk about once everybody gets an electric vehicle and we all plug in at half past five, what's it going to do to the grid? Well, I think we've kind of quashed those concerns now. Uh, it's not going to make a difference. National Grid have said they've got plenty of capacity as it is at the moment, but very sensibly, let's look at the future and let's make sure that we never have that overload effect for any particular reason. So uh, they talk about vehicle to grid, something that we, um, we know all about at the moment with the new Nissan Leaf that's capable of doing it. And there's products that um, allow it to talk to your house and feed uh, energy in and out through your car. And while we're talking about uh, providing energy, uh, this isn't to do with the report, but it is another announcement that just happened in the last week. Uh, the national grid here in the UK have said that um, in order to ensure that there is a smooth transition and there's never going to be that overload, they're looking at a new pricing structure and they're looking to encourage people to charge off peak. Now, traditionally off peak has been the middle of the night when nobody's using it and then that still will be the case. But more and more so now during the day when we're getting solar and wind power going into the system and it's not necessarily being used. They said that if you own an electric vehicle and you plug in at those off peak times, then you will be incentivized to do so. Now, it doesn't go any further than saying you'll be incentivized, but that will either be a reduction in price or an increase in price at the core times so that uh, at the off peak times, it doesn't cost as much. The other thing that uh, we often talk about when we look at uh, all the incentives we get at the moment to drive electric vehicles is uh, the, the road fund license here in the UK. Uh, at the moment, if you buy an electric vehicle, you don't pay any road fund license. Um, it's obviously there's a structure depending on the pollutants that a car kicks out of how much you pay if you drive a petrol or diesel car. Well, obviously, if we all move to electric vehicles, where's that money going to come from to maintain the roads and um, our, our infrastructure? Well, it's going to have to change at some point. And it's a topic that we've spoken about for years and years and years about uh, really the road fund license probably isn't fit for purpose, even if you take electric vehicles out of the equation. But this gives the government now the perfect opportunity to review that in its entirety and look at how we as individuals and businesses use our vehicles. So rather than having a, a flat fee, depending on how much pollutant your vehicle kicks out the back, well, perhaps now we can look at what our usage is. How much of the road do we use? How much of the motorways do we use compared to the country lanes? How many miles do we do every year? So perhaps now is a time where, uh, and this is certainly what the report has uh, suggested that they look at, let's look at a uh, pay per use type road fund license taxation. And um, depending on the miles we go, where we go, we pay the money relevant to that. And that change for me, I think is for the better. Uh, of course, we know that we're all gonna have to pay road fund license at some point. We can't go on getting it for free. Let's just have a really fair system um, where I pay relevant to what I drive, not relevant to what a sales rep does 30,000, 20,000, however many thousand miles a year. Uh, I think that's a fairer system. And the final part of the report talks about autonomous vehicles. And it says that, of course, they're not here yet, but we are developing towards them. And any plans that get submitted now by any major planning, road planning um, development team should incorporate some thought or some planning around autonomous vehicles coming. So the way that the roads are planned and laid out, they should support those autonomous vehicles. Now this report is published every five years. And as I said before, the ministers that look at it, they've got no ob obligation to follow it. Uh, they generally, they do what they want, let's be honest. Uh, they commission all sorts of independent reports. They've had an independent report into uh, pay. They, uh, I think the independent report suggested that uh, ministers should have an 11% pay rise. Surprise, surprise, they voted to, to support that. Another independent report suggested that uh, public service workers here in the UK should also have a pay rise. Surprise, surprise, they didn't support that. So they got a, a minuscule amount compared to what was suggested. So it shows that actually this isn't what's going to happen. It just gives them advice and well, it's down to them. It's what works for them. It's what their priorities are at this time. Uh, and 
who knows where they're going to go with it. But an interesting report nevertheless, and I think quite a sensible one. It's probably where we're all thinking where things should go uh, without being silly and expecting the world. So what has the government done so far to address any of these issues? Well, they set up a charging infrastructure investment fund. Now they said this fund is a, it's a 400 million pound project. And when you actually scratch beneath the surface, what you find is that they have uh, pledged 200 million pounds into this fund and they're expecting to raise another 200 million pounds from private investors. Now this sounded great, apart from certainly the last time I heard anything about it, they hadn't got any private investors on board. So at the moment it's sat at 200 million. So a lot of work to be done there in order to raise that capital to support this charging infrastructure rollout across the UK. The government are calling their uh, vision of the future the uh, road to zero strategy. And they're saying that uh, half of cars uh, sold by 2030 need to be ultra low emission. Again, we've seen this in the news. It started off as being electric vehicles, but actually uh, they just need to go a reasonable range on their batteries, uh, they can still have engines in them. Um, and all cars and vans by 2040 need to be zero emission capable. That last word was added later on. So again, we thought by 2040, we would be a uh, ice-free country, we wouldn't be selling them anymore. But actually, they've just upped the mileage a bit and said that the cars need to be able to travel on their batteries for a bit further. So. Um, I wouldn't say the government have really stuck their neck out uh, and they're really pushing forward with it. They're being quite cautious. And uh, I think there's an awful lot of pressure from uh, the car manufacturing companies on the government, especially with everything else that's going on at the moment. And Dara mentioned that Brexit word. They're trying to just settle things down and keep things stable. Uh, I'm actually hoping that naturally these things will evolve. And by 2040, in you know, over 20 years time, I think the technology and the prices of these electric vehicles will be such that actually nobody will want to buy a, a nice car anymore anyway. So in a nutshell, that's kind of it. That's what the government are talking about. That's what this independent body have looked at. Uh, that's the vision for the future. Um, what do you think? Are we pushing ahead, doing enough? Are we, uh, I say we, the, the government here in the UK, are they taking it seriously enough? What are your thoughts? Pop something in the comments. Let's have a bit of a discussion about it. Not an argument, because we're all singing off the same song sheet, I'm sure. We all want the same thing. So um, it'll be interesting just to uh, hear your views on it. And have, is there anything else that's going on that maybe in your local uh, council, they're really pushing ahead with it? Or perhaps the opposite. And I know there's big sort of black spots in the country that there's no charging infrastructure whatsoever. So um, let's have a chat about it in the comments. But for now, hopefully you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, remember to like and share. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and also, if you want to support the channel, uh, follow the Patreon link that will pop up in a minute in the screen. But for now, thanks ever so much for watching uh, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.